unresting goal. Minister of Law and Order shows that the tense situation is under control. However, police curfew reimposed to beef up security. Members of parliament cry foul. Surveillance of mobile devices, a violation of parliamentary privileges, says UNP. Former president maintains it is a dangerous situation. Health impact on white asbestos. Government embarks on fresh research to solve issue. How we can address the issue by balancing both sides. Time is running out for a Brexit deal. The EU warns UK's premier to hurry. I made it very clear to the Prime Minister May that this progress needs to happen at the beginning of December. And in cricket, sluggish start for India. Hosts bowled out for 172 in their first test against Sri Lanka. Bring you news from home and across the world. This is First at 9 on Adhidharana 24-7. Good evening, I'm Katharina Chang. Now want your top story tonight. Comments and views continue to be expressed today as well over the submission made to the Commission of Inquiry on bonds regarding the revelation of telephone communications maintained by COPE members with the former director of Perpetual Treasuries, Arjun Aloysius. In Parliament too, the topic came under heavy discussion as calls were made to reveal names of other members of the Parliament who maintained communications. මේක මන්ත්‍රීවරුන්ගේ දුරකතනට ඇප් කිරීම ලක් කරන ලද්දේ කවර පදනමක් මතද? පොලිස් පතිවරයා කැඳවා විභාගයක් සිදු කරන ලෙස අපි ඉල්ලාසන the problem here is yes. you can investigate yes but publication of the names is a violation of privilege commission එක ඉදිරියේ කිසි කෙනෙක් වැරදි කාර්යය වෙලා නැහැ commission එකේ වාර්තාව පිට වෙලත් නැහැ මෙම බැඳුම් කර කොමිසම හමුවේ මේ දියත් වෙමින් තිබෙන පරීක්ෂණය අපේ රටේ වංචා දූෂණ පැතිරී තිබෙන ආකාරයේ පිළිබඳව හොඳම එලිදරව් කිරීමක් මේ රටතුර කරගත හැකිව තිබෙනවා ඒ නිසා අප යෝජනා කරන්නේ සියලු මන්ත්‍රීවරුන් මෙම චූදිතයන් සමග කරන ලද ගනු දිනු එලිදරව් කළ යුතු තිබෙනවා මේ පාර්ලිමේන්තුවේ 40ක් දෙනෙක් නම් ගෑවිලා තියෙනවා ඒ 40ක් දෙනාගේම නම් කරුණා කළ එලියට දෙන්න ඒ අය කතා කරපු හඬ පඩ Convening a media briefing, a UMP parliamentarian stated that surveillance of telecommunication devices of parliamentarians violated parliamentary powers and privileges. අපි මේ ගැන ගරු කතා නායක තුමා සමගත් අද උදේ අපි සාකච්ඡා කරා මේ වරප්‍රසාද යටතේ මන්ත්‍රීවරුන්ගේ කිසිම විටකවත් දුරකතන ටැප් නොකළ යුතුයි කියන තැන අපි ඉන්නවා ටෙලිකොමියුනිකේෂන් නෝම්ස් කියලා ජාතියක් තියෙනවා දත්ත ලබා ගැනීම සිදු කළ හැක්කේ ත්‍රස්තවාදී කාර්යයන් හා විශේෂයෙන් අධිකරණයකින් නියමන කාර්යයන් වලදී ඒ අධිකරණ කටයුත්තට පමණයි එය අධිකරණ කටයුත්ත අවසන් වෙනතුරු මාධ්‍ය හෝ වෙනත් කටයුතු සඳහා නිකුත් කිරීම කළ නොහැක්කක් කියන එක පැහැදිලිවම සඳහන් වෙලා තියෙනවා. ද අර්ජුන ඇලෝසියස් මහත්මයාත් එක්ක දුරකතන සංවාද වල එතුමන්ලා යෙදිලා හිටියා නම් අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම එතුමන්ලා එතනදී ඒ අර්ජුන ඇලෝසියස් මහත්තයාව බේරගන්න එතුමන්ලා වැඩ කරලා තියෙන්න ඕන. නමුත් අවසානයේදී කෝප් කමිටුවේ සියලු දෙනාම එකඟ වෙච්ච වාර්තාව තමයි පාර්ලිමේන්තුවට ඉදිරිපත් කරේ. එතකොට ඒ වාර්තාව තමයි නීතිපති දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවට යවුවේ අගමැතිතුමා. එතකොට අපිට පේනවා මේ पक्ष other politicians also express their views in this regard man hitana me gana e adala desmahal paksha yamma karika parliamento tulin yam piyawara ganna ona hondai yam vidhiyaki meke waga uttara karuwan wena bahira pudgalayo perpetual treasury samagame me mantriwaru haraha parliamento isuduwecha e coop deweni coop committee we parishane sambandhen yam yam adaha sumaru karagatta bawa peniyana उदय मे संबंधी मंत्रो निधास दिन पार्लमेंट इधर प्रकाश अक्रन है बे खरुण कैसे क्यूवत एवा अहगनी बलागनी रट समाज कोई तरह दुर्ट पिलगन कारण इधर पावती
पार्लियामेंट मंत्री सुजीव सेठ सिंह देशीय हाथली सकत पार एक कतार कर ला एलओसी से करनो अजीत पी पेरेला उन्हें कतार कर ला हाथली सकत पार करना कोर्ट कमिटी में हिट अपुन यूएनपी सेट करना में तो ना नियम और ओबरे किंगला में नाटे तो मैं मेरा तेविवस्ता हाथ में Meanwhile, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa, who arrived at the Narayanpeta Abhyarama Vihare this morning in lieu of his 72nd birthday, responded to journalists. <laughs> Minister of Law and Order and Southern Development Sagar Ratnayaka says the situation in several parts of the Gaul district remains under control after tense situation led to police curfew being imposed. Police curfew was removed in the areas of Kurunduwatta, Mahapugala, Valipiti Modara, Ukwatta, Gintota East, Gintota West and Piyandigama in the Gaul district at 9 a.m. today. However, police media spokesperson A.S.P. Ruan Gunasekara, however, confirmed that a 12-hour police curfew will be reimposed in the same areas from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. tomorrow. Police took measures to beef up security of the Vidanagudi area in Gintota in Gaul district due to a situation of unrest on Thursday night. <laughs> In this backdrop, with a tense situation arising between two parties, police curfew was imposed last night to the Gramaneladari divisions of Valipiti Modara, Mahahapugala, Ukwatta, Gintota West, Gintota East, Piyadigama and Kurunduwatta in Gaul district. <laughs> Earlier today, police curfew imposed on the seven Gramaneladari divisions in Gaul were lifted. The Ministry of Law and Order said additional police, riot police, Police Special Task Force and Tri-Forces personnel were deployed to control the situation. Police further said 19 persons were arrested in connection with the incident and will be remanded till the 30th of this month. <laughs> Ministers Chandi Mavira Kodi and Faiza Mustafa, Parliamentarians Mujibur Rahman and Vijay Palahetti Arachi visited the area to look into the situation. <laughs> Inspector General of Police Pujit Jayasundara also visited the area to ascertain security status of the area. Meanwhile, five persons of the seven who sustained injuries in the incident are currently being treated at the Karapitiya Teaching Hospital. A discussion on the situation chaired by Minister of Home Affairs, Vajir Abe Vardhana, was also held with the participation of clergy of the area, district and divisional secretariats, Gramaniladari officers and several parliamentarians. तीरना करने के ला नायक स्वामी इंद्र एनवान से के प्रधानात्वेंग ये वाके ये मा पियतुमाला के प्रधानात्वेंग अने मुस्लिम मार्गिम का नायक यंग के प्रधानात्वेंग ये वाके ये हिंदू आगे में का नायक यंग के प्रधानात्वेंग इन कामितुवा का पी पच कल्लती बिनो ये कामितुवा प्रादेशिक वसिंति बिना तात्त्विक पिलेबा� पासुगीय दासे वेंदा सावसर विदान गुड़ के न प्रदेश है दे यातुरुपैदी एक इन गमन करें में सिटे पुत्गले इन दे देने कुटा तवात पार्श्व के पुत्गले इन कहीं पदने एक पहाड़ देनो मैं पहाड़ दी मटा पाद के वेलाती बनने इट पैरा सिद्धो रियान थ्रु देखा कैसे ना मुत एमा पुत्गले इन निशेन ए रियान थ्रु पैरादारी करेगे नहीं ना पुत्गले इन परिसर असत्य खटकाता इधरी पात कर रहे हो ये अंतवादी परिसर संबंधे नुत में पन्ते प्रतिपादन आनु आप इधरी टा काटे तो करने बाला पड़ो तू बिना तब दूर टा में प्रदेश के सामे आरक्षा के लिए मसंद हाँ में वैदित पुलिसीय पुलिस विशेष कार्य बालकाय सह त्रिविधा मुदावयों � Stern action will be taken against anyone, irrespective of their positions and political affiliations, attempting to resort to racist propaganda.
The same will apply to rumour mongers trying to capitalise on this opportunity to achieve petty political gains. Unquote. Police and STF personnel continued to be deployed in the Gramaniladari divisions of Velipiti Modara, Mahapugala, Ukwatta, Gintota West, Gintota East, Piyadigama and Kurunduvatta in the Gaul district. Meanwhile, the Working Committee debate on revenue and expenditure pertaining to defence, home affairs and economic policies, law and order and southern development ministries was held today. President Maitripala Sirisena was also present in Parliament during the debate. Yudde ni kena kata dewa li diri ategi ni ano beri una, beri di minisu eke gawuru eka ni diri ategi ebu nisa. Amuda awe hitia yudde meh yung yana ata ni nemei, yudde peti en pita apara ata karbu den ne tunda ne hitia. E a yata tama hita bu arak fele eka muda ana, e hita bu hamuda apati jaga jai suri ata ana. Manusi e a iti waski ang yana leka ntu ma hema ki uama, e wa wisan dan no ni arak shaka matia. Manda ka hamuda apati tu ma eka daka dala dala dia. Hamuda apati daba ya ono anta yangola kakula kate daga. Hamuda apati una, weda kara no ni am kisi wine ra muak ke tulu. Hari tanya ta hari minisu yodo wa agen tama i rate arak shaka sape aga. Garu jangan di bawah ini. Obat tu mah polon naru ini pada cemanu sekat ini. Apa itu awal nak kami ingilan awak? Bedung wadi, bivasta, mera te, niatnya bawa te pat kerela. Ia peradai benda nang ini dengen pak. Oya bivasta agen ala mera te bedung. Ia ke paripu akan ne. Paksa, vipaksa, biokkoma. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation for the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed, together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs for Sri Lanka, Tilak Marapana, signed agreements covering the acceleration of customs operations and mutual assistance, as well as establishing a joint consular committee. Sheikh Abdullah affirmed during the meeting the UAE's keenness to strengthen relations with Sri Lanka across multiple domains. Minister Tilak Marapana stressed Sri Lanka's determination to boost cooperation between the two nations to a high level, noting that special attention is paid to areas common interests between the UAE and Sri Lanka, particularly in fields of politics, economy and food security. UAE's Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation arrived in Sri Lanka today as part of his Asian tour. He also paid courtesy calls on President Maitri Pala Sirisena and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. The working group report on the third cycle of the Universal Periodic Review of Sri Lanka was adopted in Geneva last night. Leader of the Sri Lanka delegation to the 28th Universal Periodic Review session of UNHRC, Deputy Minister Dr. Harshani Silva told presenting his final remarks. Welcome the recommendations made to Sri Lanka, calling it constructive and useful, but note that they will be accepted in a responsible manner. Sri Lanka accepted 117 out of 230 recommendations made by 90 countries. The Universal Periodic Review Cycle is a process which involves a review of the human rights records of all UN member states. Sri Lanka has previously undergone two UPR cycles in 2012 and 2008. Each review is facilitated by groups of three states of Troikas, which act as rapporteurs on the country under review. This year, the Troika concerning Sri Lanka was composed of Burundi, South Korea and Venezuela. The draft report of the Working Group on UPR of Sri Lanka has submitted this report to the Working Group for adoption. During the interactive dialogue session on Sri Lanka, which took place on Wednesday, 88 countries made statements, while 13 countries presented questions. The working group report on the third cycle of the Universal Periodic Review of Sri Lanka was adopted at the conclusion of the 28th UPR session in Geneva yesterday. La sección del informe queda así. The section of the report is adopted. The report aims to outline the progress made in the promotion and protection of human rights in the country since Sri Lanka's second UPR cycle in 2012 and the implementation of recommendations made to Sri Lanka. Delivering final remarks at the 28th UPR, leader of the Sri Lankan delegation, Deputy Minister of National Policies and Economic Affairs, Dr. Harsha De Silva stated that out of 230 recommendations made to Sri Lanka, 177 were accepted and 53 were noted. He added that 12 voluntary pledges have been undertaken. I'd like to begin by saying how much Sri Lanka welcomed the opportunity of its third universal periodic review to be able to demonstrate the importance that Sri Lanka attaches to human rights under the National Unity Government's vision towards building a stable, peaceful 
reconciled and a prosperous nation. All the recommendations made to us are constructive and useful to us. In principle, we appreciate all the recommendations made to us. However, we have to be mindful in ensuring that we accept recommendations in a sincere and responsible manner. However, we will, in our domestic processes, look at all recommendations made to us carefully and share all recommendations with relevant institutions. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Verana 24-7. Deputy Secretary to the Treasury Essa Artigula says the government's intention is not to grant tax concessions via Budget 2018 but to maintain tax consistency. Artigula pointed out that such policy is pivotal to maintain a robust tax regime. He said this responding to a question raised at a seminar held in Colombo recently. So why can't the government uh, can't have a consistent long term direction? In a special uh, recent example, it's a so I think uh, one year back, uh, the taxes were on three lakhs. The after next year, it was around 25. So suddenly, it redu the reduction of 10 lakhs. So what is the normal long-term direction of the government? So normally, how can the normal person can rely on these taxes? You know, in this uh, regress analysis, there are outliers, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, I think uh, present. Uh, as Minister, he has uh, categorically mentioned, I think all the chambers when we discuss, they didn't want tax concessions, they want uh, consistency. It's the key for any business. We have to be in a way, know what, what will happen. Because that's why we introduced this in a new act. And there were several proposals to uh, do amendments. But we were resisting that because before implementing, there was, there was a reason to change this. Minister of Science, Technology and Research, Susil Premajanta, says the government will send a team of experts to Russia to determine health ramifications of the commonly used roofing material, white asbestos. The minister made the remark at a recent seminar in Colombo, where he added that they will seek to develop technology so that asbestos can be used without adverse health effects. According to a cabinet decision last year, government decided to control the use and import of asbestos from January 1, 2018 and to prepare an operational program to ban asbestos-related production by 2024 with the view of improving public health. The launch of two reports on usage and effects of chrysotile fibre, commonly known as white asbestos, in Sri Lankan roofing products, was held under the patronage of Minister of Science, Technology and Research, Susil Prema Jayanta. One report by the National Building Research Organisation was a study on air pollution from chrysotile fibre in roofing products in Sri Lanka, while the other by the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Muratua was a study on the usage of chrysotile fibre cement roofing sheets. Addressing the event, Minister Susil Premajanta discussed the need for further research on the impact of white asbestos on human health. WHO has banned brown and blue chrysotile fiber. Now we are in the process of engaging research with the white chrysotile fiber affecting the health. We are sending a team of uh, experts speaking from different ministries and institutions so then they will gather information and then report back. Uh, with the development of technology without harming how we are going to uh, use this raw material in roofing industry because it affects the industry for any change and first for uh, the general public so then we and see how we can address the issue by balancing uh, both sides. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Verana 24-7. Welcome back to the news. The European Union warns British Prime Minister Theresa May that she has roughly two weeks to put more money on the table if the EU is to agree to begin Brexit trade talks before the end of the year. European Council President Donald Tusk said although he is ready to move on to the next phase of talks, the UK must show more progress on the divorce bill.
European Council President Donald Tusk, who met with Theresa May on the sidelines of an EU leaders' meeting in the Swedish city of Gothenburg, urged the UK to step up progress. While good progress on citizens' rights is being made, we need to see much more progress on Ireland and on a financial settlement. I made it very clear to the Prime Minister May that this progress needs to happen at the beginning of December, at the latest. Responding to questions raised by media, the British Premier said good progress has been made but more needed to be done. We should move forward together uh, towards that point where sufficient progress can be declared and uh, we can look ahead to what deep and special and comprehensive partnership between the UK and the remaining 27 members of the European Union. Thank, Thank you. Tens of thousands of Zimbabweans flooded the streets of Harare today, celebrating the expected fall of President Robert Mugabe, their leader for the past 37 years. Demonstrators headed towards Mugabe's office demanding his resignation. The march, which is supported by the military, came on a day of widespread jubilation in the capital Harare and other cities following the army's takeover on Wednesday. Regional branches of the ruling ZANU PF party, as well as war veterans who until now were loyal to President Robert Mugabe, are also demanding his resignation. Mugabe had been under house arrest for days, but yesterday he made his first public appearance at a graduation ceremony in the capital. Let's now take a look at some other stories making news across the world. The Argentine Navy is searching the South Atlantic for a submarine that had not made radio contact for 72 hours. According to the Navy, the vessel with its 44 crew was last located more than 400 kilometers off the coast of Patagonia. US President Donald Trump suspended the import of elephant hunting trophies only a day after the 2014 Obama-era ban was relaxed by his administration. Trump tweeted, however, that the change was on hold until he could review all conservation facts. Iraqi forces yesterday captured the border town of Rawa, the last remaining town under the control of so-called Islamic State, signalling the collapse of the group's self-proclaimed caliphate. You are watching... Sri Lanka's trusted news brand, other than a 24-7. Starting off with cricket news now, interruptions due to weather conditions seem to be a consistent issue as bad light forced early stumps in the first test match between Sri Lanka and India. Sri Lanka, however, reached 165 for the loss of four wickets at stumps after bowling out India for 172 on day three of the test at Eden Gardens in Kolkata. India resumed their innings on 74 runs for the loss of five wickets, with Chiteshwar Pujara standing unbeaten on 47. Day three, however, did not turn lucky for the Indians, except for Pujara as he slammed his 16th test half century. Suranga Lakmal was the spotlight performer as he clinched four for 26, restricting the home side for 172. Seamers Lahiru Gamage, Dasun Shanaka and spinner Dilruan Pereira also picked up two wickets each. Bhuneshwar Kumar struck early in the visitors' innings as he toppled Sri Lanka's openers. A flourishing 99-run partnership between Lahiru Tirmana and Angelo Matthews put Sri Lanka firmly on course. Sri Lanka stood at 165-4 at stumps. It's a good player, he's got a good record. Dick Weller, very... On to rugby now. Marking the start of the third week of the rugby league, CHNFC registered victory over CRNFC in their encounter at the race course grounds yesterday. CHNFC fought hard during the past couple of weeks but failed to register any win. Coming into play, CHNFC did not take much time to activate the scoreboard as they earned three points with a penalty. With a brilliant display of playing, CHNFC managed to extend their lead to eight points with a try. 
Sudsyar NFC did not hesitate as they bounced back with a converted try, adding seven points under their name. CHNFC, however, led the first half with 11 points while CRNFC stood on seven points. CHNFC showed some exceptional talent in the second half, winning the match 19 to 12 against CRNFC. In tennis, David Goffin recovered from a slow start to beat Australian Dominic Thiem yesterday to fix a semi-final clash with Swiss favourite Roger Federer at the ATP Finals. Meanwhile, in another clash yesterday, world number 6 Grigor Dimitrov battled past Pablo Carino, Busta of Spain at the ATP Finals in London. Belgian David Goffin recovered from a slow start in the match to thrash Dominic Thiem 6-4, 6-1 and set up a challenging semi-final clash with six-time champion Roger Federer. Dimitrov continued his impressive form to advance into the semi-finals by beating Pablo Carreno Busta 6-1, 6-1 who had replaced fellow Spaniard Rafael Nadal earlier in the week. Okay. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. Let's now cross over to Star the Nupeka at the Other Verena Weather Centre with your forecast first evening edition for the next 24 hours. Welcome to the Weather Center. This is your forecast first for the next 24 hours. Tomorrow's temperatures will average at around 27 degrees Celsius in coastal areas, maxing out at 29 degrees in the west. Cooler temperatures in the low 20s will prevail in the central hills. Now a low pressure zone will form across the island during the course of the day, spelling widespread showers and thunder showers. That's it from the Weather Center tonight. Up next is your city by city forecast. And before we go, we'd like to take you to London, where the annual parade to mark the inauguration of the city's newly elected Lord Mayor, Charles Bowman, was held recently. Thousands of people and dozens of decorated floats took part in the show, which featured a light-hearted combination of traditional British pageantry and elements of carnival. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening. Information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Verena 24 7.